Colonel Springer, <laughs> first of all, thank you for taking the time to talk to me. Um, if somebody came up and said, who is Colonel Springer? Where were you born? What, what's the roots of, of Colonel Springer? Well, uh, I was actually born in St. Louis, Missouri. And, okay. Uh, my, I moved as an infant, and my father worked in the uh, uh, as a, kind of a sidelight of the aviation industry. He chased, uh, he was a metal bender, uh, two and die guy, and, and okay. he chased contracts around the countryside. So, uh, like I sometimes think about that when I moved to Ashland in the 1953 time frame, that was my sixth school in six years. Oh my God. Sixth school in six years. So, uh, and then we lighted and uh, stayed here, graduated from uh, Ashland High School in 1960. I was fortunate enough to get uh, an appointment to the United States Naval Academy, graduated from there in 64. Naval Academy, but I got commissioned in the Marine Corps, and uh, I, I went on then and uh, and spent the, the next uh, 20 plus years in the in the Marine Corps, doing a, a variety of things. Uh, probably, in, in terms of the end-to-end -end type thing, uh, uh, had a chance to join NASA as an astronaut and flew two uh, two space shuttle flights. So, what was uh, it like? I mean, that's probably the, your number one question when you talk about space, and, and I just want to touch on that slightly. What was it like in space? Well, it's a uh, it, it's everything we do here on Earth without gravity. Uh, okay. I mean, if you, I, and I, I say that lightheartedly, but but it's uh, it's it's actually kind of entertaining, and uh, there's some fun things that you can do up there. Uh, you know, you release uh, uh, and there's a, what I call stupid astronaut tricks. You you take a, a bottle of uh, orange juice and you'd squeeze a little bit out and would form a perfect sphere, and then you could take a straw and put it in the middle, suck it right out of midair. Now we were busy most of the time, but we everybody had to do that at least once. Now I want to jump real quick. What brought you here tonight is you're going to be talking about Vietnam. You also did, how many tours in Iraq and uh, Vietnam did you do? I did uh, did two tours in Southeast Asia and uh, what years? Was, were those? Uh, was there 67, 68, and then again in 73, 74. So uh, right in the middle of it, uh, I think that was the 67, 68 was probably the most activity and, and the uh, the greatest uh, losses and all that in that 67, 68 time frame. Uh, by the time I got back and it was in and out in the, in, towards the end of the uh, conflict and uh, uh, sometime on the board of ship and sometime sometime in uh, Vietnam. Now you all you actually flew with Huey helicopters too, right? I did. Yeah, started Besides out in jets, but jets. Uh, but transitioned the F four, I think, if I remember. F four. Right? That's correct. F four. Yeah. So uh, that was that was one of those things. In fact, I. I did a uh, recent uh, presentation to the students at the high school, and I said, uh, I, I told them they ought to take advantage of the opportunities they've got. And uh, what I really want to do is tell them that and you, anybody in the military will realize it. When headquarters Marine Corps calls and says, we've got an opportunity, you're already too late hanging up the phone. You, you never know what those opportunities are going to lead to. And that's how I got into helicopters. So, so how did you, um, uh, real quick, just touching there, what's the, the, the difference? Uh, I, I know there's a lot of difference, but um, what what should you enjoy flying more, the F4 Phantom or the Huey? You know, for a for a pure thrill, uh, uh, the F4 was amazing. I, I mean, you could you had so much power. I, I was thinking about that today when I was thinking about talking tonight, and and I, re I reminded myself that once upon a time, some somebody said an F4 just proves if you give it something enough power, you can fly a tank. Uh, and, and, and but it was it was a great airplane. But on the other hand, when I got into flying Hueys and Cobras, uh, and I deal with this a little bit when I'm talking to the veterans. I work more closely with the ground units, and and, and that's you know, as you well know, in, in the uh, your whole idea inside the Marine Corps uh, was supporting the riflemen at the, in the Vauxhall, and and we really did that in spades with the helicopters, and, and you felt a much more a part of the the battle itself, if you will. Sometimes in the F4, but more more closely in the uh, in the Huey and the Cobra. When I was in the uh, Army, I actually got a chance to fly uh, uh, quite a few different helicopters. Uh, being Blackhawk, I actually got to fly in a Huey uh, several times, and that was always fun. And I noticed the Huey always has a very distinctive chopping sound. Oh yeah, you always tell when you know, in Fort Hood, Texas, when they come flying in, you you knew you didn't have to look up. You knew it wasn't nah. a Blackhawk. You knew it wasn't anything. Yeah, no, that, you knew what that, it was. Yeah, that chop 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 chop. Yeah, yeah everybody recognizes that. So, but uh, anyhow, well, I appreciate it, uh, Colonel, and I, I really look forward to hearing your speech tonight, and, and uh, I appreciate it. Oh, you're most welcome. Thank you. Thank you, sir.